How's everyone doing? It has been a while since I've actually posted any videos. Um, the patch was delayed till Friday. The newest patch that came out last Thursday was delayed till Friday, and I was out doing things, so uh, timing wasn't very good there. So I was not able to get some videos for a couple days here, but I am back, showing a little bit of Spark gameplay while I go over the the newest patch, or I guess not so new anymore since it's been out for like, almost five days now. But um, this is also notable because it's a 4v5, our first, our fifth person ever connected to the game. And we put up a very good fight here, uh, despite being down a man. But the new patch introduced a few uh, a few major features here. The first being is the gear system. Uh, uniforms are now split up into head, torso, and leg. So you can now mix and match uniform pieces, uh, the skins. You can also buy the piece individually. Uh, generally that's not... Um, it's efficient as uh, buying the whole thing in one, in one fell sweep or one fell swoop but um, you do have that option if you really just want one piece you want just the uh, just the frosty head for assassin nothing else on that uniform it's uh, a little convenient there they've also added matchmaking or it's in testing right now it's currently uh, as of this posting it has been disabled there's a bit of problems with it but matchmaking has finally come um, the current version of it is solo only, there's no build teams available, it is just you by yourself queuing up for it. I have not gotten it to work at all, it, like I said it has some issues, so hopefully by next patch it'll be fully up and running properly, but it is coming now, I know a lot of people have been looking forward to having matchmaking, the game's been pretty unbalanced, a little hard to learn when you can't get a very even footing, but it is it is coming so just a little more patience and hopefully by the end of March we'll have a pretty uh pretty reliable matchmaking system in place. They've been working on this uh, custom a custom job here, so hopefully we'll be pretty good and give us uh, what we need. The other change was the uh, the UI for the uh, I guess for the for the lobby or the meta the meta part of uh, Monday Night Combat is has been undergoing some uh, cosmetic changes. Uh, the first iteration was the last patch. I didn't really touch on it. It was kind of a little, little disorganized. They've uh, cleaned it up a bit better. It's still not entirely intuitive. You don't buy uh, endorsements or products from the uh, store. You buy them from the locker room. But you also set them up there from the locker room. So I guess the easy way to think about it is that if you want to buy things with Uber points, you buy them from the store. Things bought with combat coins are bought from the lo uh, locker room. Besides that, there's been a... Uh, balance changes have mostly been um, bug fixes for the most part. I'm actually, showing, I'm actually showing Spark gameplay here because Spark was heavily fixed in the recent patch. His teleport's a lot more reliable. Um, there are some issues with it still, but in most cases it refund the cooldown if it, if it bugs out instead of eating it up. Um, it seems to work more often than not, and an actual bigger change is the fix to his alt fire on his primary, um, his sword. It no longer uses the uh, charge system, it now uses a the uh, aiming cooldown like grapples do. If you look at the uh, when I have the sword out, if you look at the the target, you will see a little ring goes around it when I use the uh, as the spike uh, charges up and. It now, now by, uh, oh, that's a missed teleport there. And now when you use it, as you use abilities or you melee, it'll fill up and you can just all fire let it go. You can pretty much just hold down your uh, primary fire and just every so often right click and you'll do a ton of damage. He just cleans bots at high levels. He just devastates bots. It is really amazing to see how fast he can kill things now, especially uh, players and bots alike. Um... I'm not sure that'll probably be uh, toned down a little bit, but I'm hoping not too much because I feel Spark is missing uh, his own uh, sort of niche or niche, however you pronounce that. You can go throw in the comments if you want. You uh, he doesn't have the Wascott has a nice toolkit for one v one fights or for assassinating people. He can last a long time, get his kill, and get out safely. He's also quite mobile with his uh, Crook Hook. He also has Team Utility with Party Pooper and uh, Crook Hook can also stun and save people from grapples. Assassin, she has a lot of control over bots and towers. She can easily, she has a lot more uh, 
room to roam around with her cloak. So it gives her a lot of utility, and she also has the nice assassination ability with her back grapples. Uh, Spark has kind of been lacking anything. He has the blind that Assassin has, but it's not nearly as useful because it replaces the bot and turret stun with a damage component, which is nice. I used it to get a kill in uh, this match, actually, but it's not as good in terms of utility. Meanwhile, all he's got really for uh, his claim to fame is the ability to ring out people, which isn't, against smarter players, isn't super, super useful. Definitely can throw people off uh, off guard. It does have its uh, uses for throwing people into into enemies, but still not the best. So by giving him just raw raw high DPS, I feel he I'm not sure if that makes him competitive, but it makes him a lot more fun. It makes him it does make him useful to some degree. And right here we actually get the first uh, annihilators by being outnumbered uh, four to five. And speaking of uh, the veteran there, veteran was another major change. Uh, his cooldown previously, his claw was a had a special thing where if you missed, you got refunded some of your cooldown. So you had a lower cooldown on misses and a higher cooldown on on hits. That no longer applies. The cooldown is the same no matter what. And a lot of people were complaining about that earlier, but people who uh, regularly played veterans were saying that it was kind of necessary because the grapple, uh, the claw is really unreliable. In many cases, the guy will just sort of float in the air and be snared or stunned for a few seconds, then nothing will happen, it won't pull back towards you. It gets caught on walls and stuff, so while it, um, it seems a little weird to reward people who miss their shots, it makes it a little more, at least gives you a few more chances to actually use it. Now they claim to have fixed a lot of the claw's problems with grappling people, and thus it will be a lot less buggier and a lot less uh, a lot less unreliable, so they felt that it they can now remove that uh, cooldown refund on misses. And we'll see how this plays out. I still have my problems with uh, Veteran. I don't think he is unbalanced, but I do think that he is... Um, I've said this in other videos, I'm pretty sure, but he is his own class. He is... He's the Veteran. He's an Enforcer. He is... He's like a claw, he's a puller, he's an initiator. He does not... He forms a role that you can't even argue against. You can argue... Uh, when people talk about team comps, you can try to argue like Comic Girl over uh, support or support over Comic Girl. You might be right or wrong, but you can at least sort of make an argument about what they bring to the table, but... But Veteran, you can't... No one does that. Only him. And when people bring up team comps, Veteran is always, always on there. I even see a team come that's not mention uh, veteran to some degree. And that doesn't say anything about him being balanced in the game. There's a difference between game balance and actual uh, pro balance. What he does is not really unbalance the game, but it does unbalance the pros. And gives you this feeling that you really need a veteran to be competitive. And maybe they will introduce uh, more of that pulling ability uh, later on in the game. Or maybe they'll tone it down so it's not as good anymore, but... I don't know, I hate to see him nerfed to uselessness, just uh, for the sake of that, but if that's what has to be done, is what has to be done. Uh, besides that, for uh, balance changes, not a whole lot going on here. There are some tweaks and stuff, there was some um, some minor changes, uh, pulling up the rule changes here. Uh, they did add a uh, an Australian region, so if you have been playing in that, uh, that re area, you now have a place to play. Uh, for the time being, it'll probably be very low, it'll have low population. But if you want to arrange some games there for your Australian players, you can do that now. Uh, the they're finally starting to add the rewards uh, uniforms for people who owned the previous Monday Night Combat. Uh, there is no final cutoff date, but if you owned it before the 29th of February, you will have that uniform now for all six original classes. It's a nice uh, gold or silver uniform on your team. But um, that is not the final cutoff date. You can still buy Money Night Combat on Steam. It's like, I think, $10, $15. And get that uniform when they update the next patch. I guess they'll slowly keep increasing the cutoff date until they finally make a, a final cutoff date. And, you know, the original Money Night Combat, uh, I still get some people playing it. Um, there's also a cooperative uh, single-player mode where you defend, against, uh, defend your money while against waves of bots. So... Definitely worth checking out if you want to see how the game was before, if you never actually uh, saw the original incarnation of the game. It's a lot different than Super Monday Night Combat. 
there are definitely some similar elements, but they have they really have changed quite a bit about flow and uh, how things work in this game. Other changes, uh, like I said, some product tweaks. Uh, Bessos is now working a bit more properly. Um, they did change the a big one is uh, two endorsement changes they made is they changed some of the uh, some of the uh, bonus effects on the bacon level of endorsements. Uh, a few of them are a little too uh, a little too easy to to use. They're just you could just load up on one type of bacon and get what much what you wanted. So they've sort of mixed that around a little bit, gave accuracy uh, maybe actually a bit more appealing to grab. Another more controversial change, and that is contro that previous change is controversial. Uh, people are wanting they're wanting refunds now on their endorsements, and my opinion on that is uh, it's the game's in beta. You pretty much expect that things are going to change, and that the money you spend will might be rendered useless. It sucks, but that's why currently I am sticking with uh, level one and two endorsements for the time being. I don't want to rely on a. Uh, also, that might change later in the game, and the cheaper, smaller effects um, make it less, less risky. Another big change that bothers me is that they removed the uh, basic sprints endorsement you get level 1. Um, or you have it all level. Basically, if you don't have an endorsement filled up, it'll be filled with level 1 speed endorsement. Which is basically there to give players who are playing a lot an advantage, uh, a more even level, uh, level, level playing field. Uh, man, I but butchered that lineup, didn't I? a level playing field against players who've been playing for a while and have their own custom endorsements. You know, make things at least even statistically, if not uh, entirely. Now they have nothing in that place. They gave uh, placebos, which do nothing, apparently. And I'm a little curious as to the reasoning behind this. It seems like you're going to give... Um, I guess they're assuming that with matchmaking in play, that will uh, won't be as big of a deal. But uh, it's kind of hard to say how that'll pan out. I know endorsements aren't a super... A super big influence on how things work, but it can still uh, it can still decide games, you know. But we'll see. Like I said, I'm not sure. There there are ramping up for a a public uh, showing at PAX East, which I will be there. I'll be checking that out, checking the Uber booth. And they are a lot of these future uh, patches are rolling out some big changes, like the gear change, the matchmaking. Uh, changes to the UI. They're just they are ramping up for that uh, big showing at PAX East. I expect a. I'm kind of anticipating a a um, pro announcement at PAX East because uh, I think they're going to do two more pros before they release at the very least. So we have a, a minimum of three in each slot, and that'd be a pretty uh, good announcement there. Uh, other changes to the patch is Funky Cola is back. In the rotation, I've played it a few times. See, I'm playing it right here, so obviously it's back in rotation. I have had no problems with it. Loco Moco, however, is now suffering from similar problems as Spunky. I don't know how programming works, but some, somehow whatever they did, it uh, screwed up the other map. So maybe they changed bot behaviors, and what works on Spunky does not work on does not work on Loco Moco. But yeah, I've seen uh, problems where bots sort of just wander around. They will not go towards money balls. They will just sort of uh, just sort of carry on and just go for another turret or something like that. I've seen uh, boat, uh, screenshots of like ten or fifteen jackpots getting stuck on a stuck on a piece of uh, geometry. A lot of weird things going on there. Not quite sure what's up with that. But they have not removed Locomoco from the rotation. I guess it's not a as big of a problem as uh, Spunky. Spunky had a lot of problems. It was seriously, besides just the bots uh, screwing up, you could fire through certain walls. There were a lot of exploits going on there, so they had to uh, had to clean that up. And if you've been listening to the game uh, audio, you'll notice that I try to get this game uh, without vent conversation, so I can actually sh uh, show you one of the newer features. You've been hearing uh, this deep voice coming out whenever certain things happen, like uh, dominations or grapple kills or whatever. That's a placeholder for, uh, I guess, Mickey Tanner later on. And one of the bigger changes there is that they're actually announcing the Annihilator beforehand. There's a 30 and 15 second warning prior to Annihilator going up. I feel that... Um, I understand the reason behind this change. I personally do not like it. I feel that um, there are a whole lot of timers you track of in this game. I don't think it's too much of a problem to 
hit tab, look at the time, and you know, pay attention to the annihilator when it goes off. I could see maybe they do a system where um, they remind you, using their matchmaking system, maybe they remind you in the early uh, low brackets, low ratings of that, they remind you what's going on there, but as far as later uh, gameplay, you should be keeping track of your... That was a bad teleport. Maybe it was a good teleport. I don't know. I think I, I die here. Yeah, turret gets me. But, um... But yeah, part of playing good is keeping track of uh, what's going on, and keeping track of what's going on also includes the Annihilator. When it goes off, how delayed it is from the uh, default cooldown, and just keeping an eye on who's setting up there and whatnot. The 30 second warning, and there it goes right there, 30 second warning, uh, will not help you entirely. Players do tend to set up a little bit earlier than that, especially defenders will set up their, uh, their turrets and stuff a good uh, minute to 45 seconds beforehand. So it's not always going to help you. But um, I I do feel like it's something that should probably be uh, kept to the lower levels of matchmaking, just to give new players, just so players, new players know that it's there, it's important, and they need to be keeping up on that. As far as other changes, like I said, they they fixed replays, so I'll be able to get more. Um, I want to see if they've done any changes to replays themselves. Because uh, replays have not been working. Like I said, I don't like the replay system, but it has been broken. And I do like the replay system for um, for giving me the opportunity to, to record games that I have not gotten a chance to record myself. Maybe I played a good game with friends or something, and it was a really good game, really replay worthy. And I want to actually you know upload that to YouTube. For the past two weeks, I I have not been able to, which really sucks. I've seen a lot of good games going on between some of the uh, better players. Uh, in the game, I wanted to show a game with um, with one of the better teams we've had. Uh, Colonel Jessup and that crew of players. We fought a good game against them. We uh, wanted to demonstrate how you can win the early game. We did very well the early game with winning Annihilator and all that, but we still lost the long game. And like I said, I couldn't replay. I couldn't record it because I was not in. I did not have my recording set up for that game, and with with replays broken, I could not record it. So, hopefully with the replay system back up, I can record more games. See if I'm to, you know, set up and get ready for it. I can also record games without having to... I don't like recording my vent conversation. It's I find it distracting. I find it, it can be annoying to people. But, uh, me and my group find funny. You might not find funny. So, games where I have vent conversation on, I've traditionally just kept it, uh... Just kept it silent. Whereas if I had an event conversation, I'll try to include this game sounds, like this replay. With replay mode, I do have the advantage that I don't have to actually listen to Vent Chatter. I can keep that out of the replay. So, uh, that's about it for the patch changes. Um, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think of... Uh, I think one last major change was uh, something with the... Where is it? It's the... Yeah, Carl has some changes with his prop pop and his handler. His handler is now, I think, a little... needs a little bit of fixing. Like... Like veteran or like uh, Spark, you can hold M1 and still hit M2 and uh, fire off a lot of that all fire that have to use ammo. And support has some changes to a shotgun. It's beyond me. I don't play support. I'm not quite sure about that. And last but not least, uh, as a addendum to the gear system, the gear now drops um, as part of the prize system. So you get like a helm, like a, a headpiece or a torso piece. You won't get entire. Uh, you will not get entire uh, uniforms though. And that's about it for the patch, and... Ooh, crack there. Ooh. But, um, that's it for the patch. And that's it for this game as well. We are going to lose right here. Like I said, 4v5. We lasted 20 minutes. Uh, it's really hard to come back from a 4v5. We did get their money ball down. We actually damaged them, so... Uh, we did pretty, pretty well on our part. But... When you are outmanned, it's really hard to... <clears throat> all it takes is one mistake, and you are... Pretty much done for the, uh, done for the game. Hope you all enjoyed that. This is going to go ahead and play out here. I see right there, pretty good game of Spark. A lot of bot kill, like I said, he really cleans through bots. I was really having my performance there. Finding him a lot of fun to play. And I hope to get more videos out more frequently here, guys. Sorry for the downtime, and I'll see you all next time. And that's the game. Hey, fans, please remember to save your ticket stuff. You're going to get 50% off any government-issued food tube at your designated dispenser.